Well, as we hit the home stretch of the 2016 election, a column in the Wall Street Journal titled, My Former Republican Party is Worth Some Attention. Brett Stevens writes this, saying, quote, I don't see the point of belonging to a party on the increasingly dubious assumption that it's slightly less bad than the opposition. If I can't get my grand old party back, I'd rather help build a new one. Joining me now, Brett Stevens, foreign affairs columnist for the Wall Street Journal. How is my impersonation of your, is <laughs> that not bad? Good. Is not bad? Okay. Um, how did you reach this conclusion? Well, with a lot of uh, misgiving and, and reluctance. But I kept thinking about where the Republican Party was just a few years ago, even when Mitt Romney was running for president, to say nothing of, where, what, of what it was when Ronald Reagan was president, and where it is today on immigration, on trade, on foreign policy, on a lot of issues that really matter to me. And it's a party I no longer recognize. When I was growing up, my parents used to say, we didn't leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left us with George McGovern and Jimmy Carter. And I more or less feel the same way now about the Republicans. So at this moment, do you not consider yourself a Republican? Well, I'm a registered Republican, and I'd like to see my old party back. I'd like, hopefully, after the election, I'd like to see the party be the party that stands for free trade, the party that understands the value of immigration for the United States, legal immigration for the United States, party that understands the importance of a strong defense, and above all, a party that insists on civility and culture in its leaders, and that's not what we have now. So as a registered Republican, who are you voting for? Well, I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton, and I'm going to vote for Republicans down ballot, and I'm sure people are now currently throwing <laughs> baseball bats through their TV screens. Uh, but, as... Because it's one thing to say and be critical of your own party. It's another thing to say, well, I'm actually going to vote for the other party to be the leader of the free world. Yeah, listen, I'm not enthusiastic about Hillary Clinton. I can't count the number of columns I've written that are uh, critical of Mrs. Clinton, but I actually think Donald Trump is a danger to the republic, and I think the only way the Republican Party finds its center, finds its soul, finds its Reagan once again is if it takes such a drubbing that it says to itself, we're never going to repeat that mistake of nominating someone with the ideas or the temperament of Donald Trump. But do you Trump. think in that case you're putting um, your party and your, your, your qualms with your party over the, the country, being that you've been so critical of Hillary Clinton, especially when it comes to foreign policy? which is your expertise. No, listen, as I said, I think Donald Trump is a danger to the republic. And, uh, you know, look, God forbid we should take the man seriously when he says maybe he's not going to recognize the results of the election. At the end of the day, you have to take men at their word. That's why they're running for president. You can't uh, uh, vote for him on the assumption that he doesn't mean a word he says. So another conservative columnist wrote a long piece just last week in the National mm -hmm. Review, uh, Victor Davis Hanson, about, and he was on our program, about basically towards a Republican mm -hmm. like yourself who says, I can't vote for Donald Trump. And foreign policy was one of the things that he focused on. And I just want to read a little bit of his article. He said, a President Trump might shake up U.S. foreign policy in controversial and not always polite ways. In far calmer fashion, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton already has revolutionized America's role overseas, from the Iraq pullout to the foundations of the Iran deal, to lead from behind Libyan bombing, to tiptoeing around violent extremism and workplace violence, to empowering Chinese expansionism to increasing distance from allies and proximity to enemies. Obama reminded us that approval from abroad is usually synonymous with thanks for weakening America and making us more like them, them than them us. Now, I'm just wondering, I mean, that's a long list, Brett. Again, mm -hmm. going back to your expertise of foreign policy, Hillary Clinton at the helm, you actually think we would be safer, even based on her record as mapped out in that piece, than a Donald Trump? Yes, I do. I mean, look, uh, as I said, if you've been reading my column for the last seven and a half years, I don't think I've had uh, nary a kind word to say about Obama, except perhaps when bin Laden was killed. And you're absolutely right. Hillary Clinton was by his side on many of those decisions, although in truth she was also quietly opposed to some of the steps that uh, he took. But as I said, Donald Trump is a danger to the republic. When you have a senior Republican like Newt Gingrich saying, we might not defend NATO, our treaty ally, in the event that Russia invades it, you're sending a signal throughout our entire alliance system that our guarantees are not good. What does that mean in South China? What does that mean for a country like Israel? What does that mean for our small and embattled uh, democratic allies abroad? That's the reason why he terrifies me. Brett? Thank you. Thanks Thank for you for sharing our vote. We'll talk more about this. Sorry I'd about love, your TV sets. We'd love to have you more uh, last, uh, next week as we get closer to the election. And we'll be right. What do you think about, Brett? Let us know. We'll be right back <laughs> with more happening now.